Welcome to this video. It's regarding this deck building game called Power Rangers Deck Building Game. This um, is a game designed by Matt Hyra. Um, I bought it a few months ago. Um, it was my first deck building game. So the biggest challenge for me was what the hell is a deck building game? Uh, so, you know, it took some time to getting used to it. I spoke to some great community members. Um, I read the, the manual that's inside, and I was able to get the hang of it. But if you are new to deck building game, or you're just new to this game, it's a great game. Um, the cool thing about this game is that it has expansions coming along. I did buy Zeal stronger than before, so I will review that one as well. But this one's just a review about Power Rangers deck building game and my opinion on it. <clears throat> so again, this is my first deck building game, so for me this was quite... And experience so let's get this opened up here let me go ahead and open it there you go so i have the bonus content so that's why i have two this is the the bay for the rangers for their zords let's put this here for now this is the lair for the villains the masters go here so you know the big bads like goldar and Rito, if you're a Power Ranger fan, you know these guys well. So let's go ahead and put this to the side over there. And let's get this out of the way. This is the manual here. This is, teaches you how to play the game, the rules, and everything. I haven't been playing uh, in a while. I've been waiting for the Zeo expansion. Really excited about that. And here's how I have my... Uh, whole thing set up here I have the dials check these out these were from the bonus content okay so guys uh, this game if you're new to it um, you can play it 1v2 2v2 uh, or 1v1 uh, so you start off with a start phase you gotta um, always refill the grid. So in the middle, there's always gonna be a grid. I'll show you guys that right now. So in the beginning, you and whoever you're playing with or multiple people choose either if you wanna be the Rangers or the villains. So right now, let me pretend like I'm playing with someone else. So you go ahead and you pick, I'll pick the Ranger, I'll pick uh, Jason. So you have to flip it to their normal form, not their Ranger form. And I mean, I've done Ranger versus Ranger for fun. So, like, if you wanted to, you know, because Tommy was, the Green Ranger was evil at one point. So, you know, once you get a grip of the game and you're good with the game, you can just mess around with it. But here we have all the Rangers. And so let's just do, they recommend doing Rito Revolto um, as a starter. So we're going to go ahead, because I know Goldar and Jason are like rivals. Uh, the Masters have two sides empowered and scheming scheming is like their human form for the ranger and empowered is like their ranger form that's goldar when he's much bigger you can tell by the buildings in the back so when rita throws her staff she makes them grow so here we have the heroes so if you're new to this game you're gonna notice that each characters has different color sides uh, so, those just mean the type of cards these characters can equip. So, or I should say attached. We have the maneuvers, which are the blue, the bluish gray. They go on the bluish grays. So anything that's a maneuver will go on the bluish grays. Then we have a purple card, which is a villain card. We also have a gray one, so that would be blue. This would be gray, which are the equipment. So they go on any gray slots you see. Jason has one. Let me flip this over, actually. So we're not confusing. And Tommy has two. And as you can see here, Goldar, he can equip a villain. Purple are villain. And the yellow are additional heroes or rangers. So the colors are purple, blue, gray, and let me just find the other one in this deck here. 
show you guys what we got here. We have yellow for the heroes. We have this brownish color for field field uh, cards. So those are the uh, cards in this game, guys. We have the yellow that can only equip the heroes. Or actually, let me not confuse you. We got the main card. Your your character, Power Ranger card, can equip the heroes. And the villains can equip on the masters. So that's purple, yellow. And then we have the other two cards, equipment and maneuver. And then we have this one, which is their signature weapon cards. And every character has a signature weapon card. These are the signature weapon cards for Goldar. This is his wings. And for Jason, it's his power sword. Alright, so what is a deck builder? That was my first question because I'm so used to playing with uh, Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu and, and things like that. You know, collectible trading card games. That's what I'm used to playing. So when I picked up this game or I learned about it, I was already thinking Yu-Gi-Oh! You know, you collect cards, you make a deck, and you, you duel people, you battle people... Um, but no, that's not the case in this game. In this game, you have a main deck composed between of 60 to 80 cards. So you'll have a deck. I'm not sure how much is in here right now, but you'll have a deck that's sitting on the side. You'll shuffle it, of course. And then you have something called a grid. So you have six cards on the grid. You can make any six cards here and the grid you can think about it like a marketplace you go to the grid and you buy from the marketplace so you have the main deck to the side you have the grid over here and then the way your deck works is every player starts with an even deck of i think it's 10 cards let me double check so each player starts with 10 cards. So the cards are even. Even though the artwork looks different, each card does the same thing. You start with seven teamwork mayhem type cards, which just gives you one shard. And we'll get into that in a second. That's for the heroes, which is the Power Rangers, the villains here. All the same thing. One shard, one shard. Seven of these. And then you get to which they both have the same thing for the villains is putty clay which gives three energy that symbol right there is energy that symbol right there is shards shards is kind of like currency what you need to buy cards off the grid so this is how much the card uh will cost you and you need to buy it based off what you see up here and the one down here is how much you need to destroy the card so once you pay that amount to destroy the card, you get whatever effect states down here. So 10 cards each is how you start your deck. So another card that we have is these green cards here. We have what's called Blade Blasters and Stunt. You don't want these cards at all. Your mission is to always get rid of these cards if your opponent for example destroys this card target foe gains one stun obviously if you are a villain you can't kill villain cards you can only kill villain cards if you're playing as a hero so for example if you're playing as jason you can use currency out of your hand so if you have um let me find a card here sorry i got this all over the place so if you have three teamworks, you can discard these cards in, the, in your discard pile, and then you can destroy this card. Once you destroy this card, it goes out of the game into the main deck discard pile, and after your turn ends, you refill the grid. So that would be the new one. Uh, sorry, you need uh, four, actually. I said three, but that's to destroy it. Yeah, I mean... If you, I'm sorry, let's go back. If you want to destroy it, you pay three. If you want to purchase it, you pay four. So the top part, guys, is how you purchase it. The bottom is how you fight the card. 
So any if you see anything on the bottom, it's how you fight the card. You can only fight villain cards or hero cards. You cannot fight an equipment card. You cannot fight a maneuver card. But you can fight a hero card if you're playing with a villain. So Goldar can attack, but Goldar would have to use up three shards. So meaning if you have three mayhem in your hand, you would discard them into your discard pile. When the turn ends, if you have less than one card, you reshuffle your hand and you draw the the six cards. I believe it's six or five. You draw five cards. So let me get this set up and we will I'll show you a, a real quick practice round and just how the mechanics works. Over here we have Tommy, the Green Ranger. And we're going to just take a quick overview look at how the mechanism works in this game. So, as I stated before, uh, the hero cards has um, sides, different color sides that you can attach cards to. So when you buy a card from the main, uh, from the grid, from the main deck off the grid, you will discard them. When you draw it from your hand, you can equip the card on the corresponding size, or you can discard it for shards, or if it offers energy, which this one doesn't. One, it's, once it's equipped, if you have enough energy, you can use the effect here. You can also use this card from your hand. It's, uh, this little symbol right here with the hand and the shield means you can use this card from your hand. Negate attack, heal three, then discard this card. Or you can use it while it's attached. And let's take a quick look at this. This is Jason. So if we attach the other cards onto Tommy, he will eventually turn into the Green Ranger. So you can take Jason. He's a hero. If you have it in your hand, you can attach him up here. If you have another equipment card, Sword of Darkness, you can attach it on the other side. And if you have a blue card, Heavy Attack, you can attach it down there. Once you attach all four of them, you flip the Green Ranger. Tommy into the Green Ranger and then you know over here it says the effects negative two to activate attached cards so now this is more beneficial for you so uh, for example this was five energy now it's three because he is getting negative two because he's a Power Ranger and once they're exhaust when you use them when you use the effect of the cards they get exhausted when they're in the exhaust state, you can choose to discard them to make room. And for your signature card, every hero or villain has a signature card. You can attach it anywhere. This is colorless. Col color oh my god, I can't even say the word. It has no color, guys. So you can attach it anywhere. Uh, so you can attach that anywhere you want. Uh, there's no color. And that's pretty much wraps up how the mechanism works. So when you use a um, equipment ability, you exhaust the card. But before you exhaust it, you have to make sure you have enough energy on your dial. And then you read the energy effects, put an equipment from your discard pile into your hand, and heal two cards. And then you exhaust it, and in the next phase, when it's your turn again, you uh, activate it, make it ready. So that's how you use your heroes. Villain plays a little different. Um, this is her scheming. Same concept. You fill out this, the uh, the cor corresponding uh, sides. So for Scorpina, you can give her the Sword of Darkness. Because it's a gray. You can give her the equipment. Um, you can give her, instead of a hero, you would give her a villain. And the bottom part, I highly recommend... You do not touch this because this will slow down your character. The best thing to do down there is to get her master. Once she has that equipped, she can transform into her stage. She doesn't need to fill up all her sides. She just needs to get her master down here to transform. So you don't have to fill up her whole side, guys. You can just fill up two sides and just get this or nothing and just get this to get her, her max uh, stage there. And, you know, I would also recommend getting her signature 
somewhere because her signature is pretty good. Deals three damage if you if neg if negated, draw one card. So you deal three damage if it gets negated, you draw one card. Uh, so Scorpina is a great character to play with. So the difference between the Rangers is you need to for the Rangers you need to get all the sides um, maxed out in order to turn into a Power Ranger. For the villains, you just need to buy the Master Card, attach it down here, and you go from scheming to empowered. So in this game, you have all these hero cards, and you have all these villain cards. Um, villains can only be attached uh, with your villain main character, and heroes can only be attached with your hero main characters. So with Tommy, Yellow, with Scorpina, Purple. So when these heroes are in the grid, and you're playing as Scorpina... If you skip your turn and they are on the grid, the six-sided grid, you will uh, receive damage for one each. So if there's t uh, the green and the blue, you will receive two damage for skipping your turn. If you do kill the blue and the green is left, you only receive one damage towards your life point. Now, killing these cards, um, you have to look down here. That's how much you have to pay in the amount of shards which are these. When you discard a card, you receive shards. Shards do not carry over, by the way. Once you uh, once you skip your turn, if you had 10 shards save up, it's going away. The only thing that carries over is energy. So you use your shard, you destroy uh, Billy, and if you destroy Billy, they all have different rewards. Uh, Taria Foe gains one stun, and having stun in your deck is a nuisance because if you draw a stun, it's a dead card. You can't do anything. So if you uh, beat Zordon, which requires three shards, you heal two. These are called adversary cards. If you beat Tommy, you get three energy. If you beat Kimberly, uh, target foe discards one attached card, which is uh, helpful. Uh, so forth, so on. Alpha, you uh, draw one card. Uh, Jason, destroy one card you control. Uh, so that's a good way to uh, thin your deck right here. Uh, and same thing with the villains. They all have different effects. Heal, target, full uh, gains one stun. So that's the mechanism right there, guys. And remember, if you do skip your turn, and if you are playing as Tommy, and you did not, and you left, um, three villains, you will receive three damage. If you leave two, you will receive two, one, so forth. Same thing goes to the heroes. If you're playing with the villains, the heroes will hurt you if you lead them on the grid. Alright guys, so the last part about just a general review is the Zorbe and the Lair. If you're playing with the villains, the Lair is your, um, this is, this is where, what you want to, um, what you want to try to obtain as early as possible. This is what you want to work against. Uh, when attached a master to the Lair, attack deals one damage for each master you control. So the more masters you attach, the more damage you, um, the more damage your adversary receives. And for the Zords, there's a Zord dock here. You can attach six swords. And to ready them, when you attach them, they're not ready. To ready them, you have to pay five energy. Ready all attached swords. Use only if your character is a ranger. So you only can use the Zord bait if you are a ranger. So don't buy any swords if you're not a ranger. Then you're just spending money. So when you buy a sword, for example, here is Triceratops. You attach it. See over here it says uh, when gain attached to uh, sword bay, you attach it. It is not ready when you attach it, so you attach it like that. And here is the skill of the sword. Uh, for zero energy, attack foe gains one stun for each block in your discard pile. But in order to use that effect, you have to pay. And once you get all the all five uh, Zords. We just attach them all here. Uh, once you get all five of them, you ready them by using the five energy. And they all have different effects. And then you can, once you have all your swords, you can get the Mega Sword. 
and and he uh, will help you get the 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 swords, the abilities. He will help you ready them all, then attack for each target foes. So, if you want to um, get the Dragon Mega Zord, you have to attach a sixth sword. It does not have to be this one specifically. You can also use. If you have the bonus content, you can also use the Tiger Sword. The difference with this effect is, if you have the Mega Sword, it needs 582 ready all swords. If you have the Mega Sword, it's less, less cost for, and it does an additional uh, skill. And if you have the drag, the Mega Dragon Sword, it's even uh, less by two points, and it does an additional uh, effect. So you want to try to get your strongest one to beat the masters to beat your opponent. Uh, this is what you strive for right here. The Mega Sword is how Power Rangers always ends with their Mega Sword battle. Now for the villains. The lair works a little different. Instead of having to pay energy and activate, uh, with these guys, it's an ongoing effect. So I would say these guys are much stronger. So for example, once you buy a master, you attach the master. You don't really have to attach it, you just put it near. And every time you bring a master in, or around the layer or wherever, you have to deal with their ongoing effect. So, Farida, at the start of your turn, you gain four energy. And that's very helpful. Uh, uh, Rito, at the start of your turn, draw one card. Goldar, discard three cards from your hand to block and gain attack. So this guy can just keep on helping you block. Uh, she can just restore your energy. He'll help you uh, <laughs> he'll help you just draw and uh, Zed, at the start of your turn, you may destroy one card in your hand. So this is a good way to thin your deck. And uh, Finster, at the start of your turn, deal three damage. This guy is a damage dealer. And Scorpina, at the start of your turn, attack full, discards one card. This is a good way to um, in a way, you're helping your foe, but in a way, you're hindering them. Because if they do have a good card in their hand, they have to discard it. Uh, so that's pretty much the overview of that as well, guys. And you want to try to attach as much masters as possible on the lair. And you want to try to attach as much zords as possible in the zord bay to get an upper hand early. Alright, guys. So here is the setup. Over there, it's just, just uh, random stuff that we have that we will use later. Um, possibly. Over here we have the setup, the layout of how the game can play out. Um, how you can set it up. And we have here, we have the Rangers. We have the Zorbe. We have your dial, which is important. You want to set this to zero. The energy to zero. And you want to set your health to 30. If you want to play a quicker game, you can set it to 20, whatever you want. I'll just set up to 30. Um, over here you have your starting deck, over here you have your sword, your signature card, you always have to buy your sword before you buy any other swords, and over here you can buy your signature card, the purchase is up right here. So again guys, I know in the beginning I gave you kind of like a general overview, but right now we're going to go in depth, um, and over here on this side we have the villains, so we have Goldar right there, and we have... His starting deck, the Lair, which is the opposite of the Zorbe. We have, again, you have to buy Goldar's Master, which equips on the bottom. Which will empower him before you can buy the other Masters, which attach to the Lair and give they give ongoing effects. And on this side, we have what's called the Stunt Pile and the Blade Blaster. The Stunt Pile has to be face down. We know what it is, but it's just like that. And this, everything else goes face down, except for the top one. And when these get discarded, they go back into the Blade Blaster pile. When these get discarded, um, they, I think, wait, let me, let me just double check. Alright guys, I do apologize, I'm a little rusty. So when the stun cards get destroyed, they go to the discard pile. Um, stun cards do not return back to the play in play so if you do run out of stun cards you do not have to refill it just ignore any effect that says give stuns 
so I do apologize if I do seem a little lost at times. I have not played in a while. I am waiting for the new expansion, the Zeal one. So guys, right here, this is the main deck. You're supposed to have 80 cards. I'm sure that's over 80. Um, so let's fill out the grid. So for the grid, we're supposed to have six. So we're going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is what our grid currently looks like. It's composed of one villain, one hero, another hero. So that's two heroes. A maneuver, equipment, and that's two villains actually. So two villains, two heroes, and one maneuver, one equipment. Uh, so each turn, if you do not kill the villains, they will reduce one damage off your life point. So you want to be careful with that, especially if you are in the, on the verge of getting defeated. So let's start off by shuffling the basic decks. Okay guys, so we shuffled both decks, we filled out the grid, now we can play uh, the game composed of a few phases, we have the start phase, the main phase, and the end phase. So we're going to start off, villains always go first, so let's play out the villains. So over here there's the villain's hand right now, oh sorry, let me draw five, I'm sorry. <laughs> what am I doing? One, two, three, four, five. Five guys, you're always supposed to draw five cards from your deck. That main deck and your deck are two different decks. The main deck is to refill the grid, your deck is to refill your hand. You're supposed to always have five cards, but you only refill your hand after you have zero cards. So let's see what we drew here. Oh wow, look at this. The villain drew five shards, five mayhems, and these symbols right here again, the little crystals means money so right now i have five dollars what can i buy here i can buy king sphinx i can buy babu i can buy alpha green i can destroy green ranger i can pretty much do whatever i want um so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm probably going to purchase this villain card so guys when you purchase the card you don't attach it when you purchase it it goes to your um, to your discard pile, so your deck discard pile, and every card you use to purchase it goes to the discard pile as well. And when you end your turn, before you end your turn, excuse me, you fill the grid up again. Here's another villain. You take damage for not destroying the heroes. So Goldar's health will go from thirty to. 28 because there was two there's two heroes on the field we got alpha and we have the green ranger and i did not equip anything so my gold art cannot do nothing unless his um effects let's see what he does the first time you play a block during each of your turns attack one foe games the attack foe gains one stun so when you play a block card with gold art, uh during your turn you will give a stun to your opponent. So, guys, let's put Goldar back. And let's draw five cards before you end your turn. You start with ten, so the remaining is what you got. So that is my deck for the next turn. My hand, starting hand, I should say. So now it's Jason's turn. So this keeps going back and forth until somebody's HP is zero or some other condition. Um... So here we have Jason, Lee, Scott, the Red Ranger. So let's draw five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see our hand here with Jason. See so what we got. Okay, we have a few things actually. We have three, three shards. And the blue one, the blue one, guys, is energy. So energy refills this dial right here that's above the health so this will give you the option to use abilities on your characters or it will also give you abilities to use these moves right here see how every move has energy costs so that will help you out 
Uh, so let's see what should we do with uh, uh, Jason here. We can buy Alpha. We can buy Knockout Blow. We can buy Jason can equip it, one equipment. So we can buy everything except for the villains, but we can destroy the villains if we want to. And we could always read the perks that the villains give us if we destroy them. So we can't destroy Babu because he's a four. We only have three shards. This right here means the, on the bottom. It means how many shards you need to defeat that card. And it says gain the top card of the main deck. So if I was to destroy Babu, I would gain this card. And it would go directly to your discard pile. <clears throat> Everything you gain, most likely, unless it states otherwise, goes to your discard pile. Uh, what we can do, we can destroy the Super Party, uh, Super Putty, excuse me. Super Putty Patroller, but we will heal 2 HP. We don't really need that. So what I'm going to do personally is I'm going to buy Alpha. Remember, when you buy them, the cost is up here. Um, and I have three, so I'm just going to discard two. I discard two. I discard Alpha as well. He does not get attached. When you draw him the next time, if I have him in my starting hand, then you can attach him. And Jason has a skill that benefits him when he has other heroes attached. It says, when you play or attach a hero, deal one damage. So, there you go. So, that goes there. Here's my hand still. I'm going to use that three energy. So, once I discard this three energy, I'll gain three energy up here. So, guys, it's repetition. It's just, it's pretty much like you're buying stuff. And when you buy it, you throw it away. Um, the reason why it's called deck builders, if you guys never played the deck building game, you take your discard pile, you shuffle it back, and you build your deck over time. It is not like a trading card game like Yu-Gi-Oh, where, whereas you already have a deck, and if you run out, it's game over. Over here, you want to run out, because you want to you wanna have the least amount of cards, and you want to draw the best cards. Um, so, we bought Alpha. We have this card left, we can't do anything about it, because nothing here costs... Uh, nothing over here costs, sorry, nothing over here costs, uh, one shard, and we can't really do anything with recovery, because recovery states, heal one if you have 20 or fewer HP, heal two instead. So we really can't use that. So that all goes to the discard pile. Um, before I end my turn, I need to draw my cards. Here are the new cards I drew. You refill the grid, always refill the grid before you end your turn. Ooh, that's a good card right there. It's Morphin' Time. Sorry for my bad quality here. When I zoom out, the quality goes down. Here we go. It's Morphin' Time. Gain one non-adversary card from the grid. It's always a good card right there. And Jason Lee Scott skips his turn. Guys, I'm not going to play the full match for myself. I'm just giving you a rundown of how the game flow looks like and how it works. So now it's Goldar's turn. <clears throat> These are the cards that he drew in his last turn. So, oh, sorry, excuse me. So there was two villains on the field, so Jason took two damage. Remember, every time there there's a villain or a hero, the opposing player, whomever's team you're on, you take one damage for each card. If you're a hero, you get hit by villains. If you're um, a villain, you get hit by the heroes. Vice versa. And over here... This is Goldar's hand right now. Um, so Goldar says, heal one if you have 20 or fewer, heal two instead. If you have 20, okay, so you can heal one. So Goldar can heal one HP. So I'll discard this card. And go to the dial tone. And we're going to heal him. So now he's going to go from 28, sorry, 28 to 29. And let's see, I can gain three energy, and I can gain one shard. So we're going to do that. We're going to give Goldar three energy. And we are going to do nothing, because nothing on here costs um, one dollar. So there's two, what's well, one hero actually, so we're going to take one damage. So we're going to go from 29 back to 28. So put that there. We're going to discard these cards. And here is where it gets interesting, guys. So now that I have no cards remaining, 
this whole discard pile that I had earlier, I'm going to shuffle this, and I'm going to redraw five cards. This is why it's called deck building, because you're rebuilding the deck by buying, discarding, reshuffling, and drawing. Okay, guys, there you go. So let me draw five cards now. One, two, three, four, five. You can only do this after, before you skip your turn. That's the last move you do. And let's see what I drew. Oh, look, look at this. I drew King Sphinx. So if you look closely, you'll see on the side right here, uh, for King Sphinx, he has three crystals, four energy. So that means if you discard King Sphinx, you can, you will receive three dollars, and I'm just calling a dollar so you guys can get the the gist of it. And you uh, gain four energy, or I can equip him to Goldar, which will probably be more beneficial, unless I want to buy something cooler on the grid. And I also got some shards. So one, two, three, and if I combine it with that, I got six crystals. And in total, I have seven energy. So next time it's Goldar's turn, if he wanted to, he can discard his whole hand and he will be... He can actually get his uh, signature, I think. Or he might be a dollar short. Uh, so let's put this here. This is Goldar's next hand. And now it's Jason's turn. So, there's Jason. So with Jason, I think we also ran out of cards with Jason. check oh no actually these are jason's card this is a new hand i forgot i drew this is why it gets confusing playing by yourself um so right now jason has four shards so jason can do a few things he can buy an equipment because it's three we're going by this the top number here is the purchase amount i can buy this equipment knockout blow um i can Destroy the super putty because down here is how much it costs to destroy them. I can destroy Baboon as well because he's four and I have four shards. I cannot buy its morphin time because it's five and I have four shards. And I cannot buy the Green Ranger because he's also five. So, <clears throat> and I can't buy my signature because it's six and I can't buy my sword because it's seven. So, you know, if you want to as well, guys, don't forget, because sometimes I forget this. You can also buy a Blade Blaster, which is also beneficial because it gives you two opposed to one, and it also deals damage, so it's not bad. So, guys, this is just a, a, a general overview of the game. Um, as the game goes on, if you attach all four sizes, four sides with the corresponding colors, so if I was to do this to Jason... Um, I was to get Alpha here, and I was to get an equipment up here, and I was to get a maneuver down here. You flip the character over, and he becomes the Ranger form, and then you get whatever effects are there stated. <clears throat> also, for Goldar, <clears throat> it's a little easier if you buy the the Master and equip the Master down here. He will empower. And then you can buy other masters. And you won't know what's here unless you flip it and buy it. So you got Finster that's next. And the same thing goes with the swords. The swords and the masters are opposite of each other. And that's pretty much it, guys. You just keep going with the flow until you reach zero on the health bar. And in order to use moves, you need energies. Without energy, you can't do anything. And that's pretty much full of the game. Um, if you guys do want me to get more in depth in a match or something, or if you want me to show you guys all the cards or just talk about the cards, I can do that. Um, when Zeal comes out, I do want to, even if I'm going to play on my own, I can play a match by myself. Because with Zeal, the cool thing is uh, you have Jason's card who actually has rainbow um, <clears throat> size, which means he can equip anything. Um, he's the only card so far that has that. Uh, the Gold Ranger, Jason Zeal. Um, so that's going to be cool. You can also do Rangers versus Rangers, which is also another cool thing. So you can do a lot of cool things when you buy the expansion. And after the Zeal expansion, there will be 
an Omega expansion. So I can't wait for that one. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching the video. Just comment below. Let me know if you guys wanted to see anything specific. I'm sure a lot of you guys have this game already. Let me know when Zero comes out if you guys want to see something with that. Because I can do some uh, 1v1 with someone or by myself. I can just show you guys different combinations. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Take care.